Happy New Year, guys. How's everybody doing? We had so many pass the last two weeks. It's been great watching everybody finish up the new year with the pass of their CPC. Now we just have to get a few more to pass. I can't wait till the new exam starts on the 14th so we know what to expect. No idea what the new exam is going to look like, but I am hopeful that it hasn't changed much and it's just reduced down in size so that it's not like an Olympic event that you have to recover from, that it's more appropriate health-wise alone to be just four hours. Anything over that is really just a major endurance thing that you would have to recover from, and you don't want to spend days, and you actually end up having to spend days to recover after taking an exam like that almost six hours for one exam it's totally uncalled for so super happy that they made that decision um, they have said that it has not changed any of the core things that went on in the exam that the only difference is like one percent difference so they had a lot of fluff in there they didn't need to deal with Supposedly, it's going to be a lot more in line with even, like, the nursing to become an RN is only 75 questions. I mean, geez, why do we need more than even 100? So I'm super happy about that. Super happy. Hey, we got 13 on. Yay. How's everybody doing? I'm still having a food coma thing going on right now. So, whew, I am trying to make sure that I have this one picture up because I didn't have it last time because I didn't have all the phones charged. So, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that if they wanted to schedule tutoring, um, I do it on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and you can schedule that at Medical Coding by Jen. All the repeat lives here on TikTok, if TikTok records them, will be on YouTube at Coding by Jen. Um, messenger group, if you follow me at or ask me at my personal messenger at Jen Brewer, same profile pic as what's here, you can join our chat group which is super cool and helpful. Like even just today, I'm just looking at our media files are right here. These are all the files that we've had that I share um, current information on some of the stuff that has been on, like where to place your camera for online exam, parts of the shoulder, parts of the knee, stuff like that have, that have been up on the um, exam recently what does the top number in the blood pressure do what does the bottom number do hold on my child needs me what you warm up the wieners. i did warm up the wieners you may eat them and the meatballs okay Thank you. you're welcome bye, bye. <laughs> did i warm up the wieners i did um yeah, we had a little fever in our house this weekend, but all better, all better, only a 48-hour fever. Let's see, what else have we been sharing in this um, group of ours? I've been querying today, put in some questions and answers and why the answer is the way it is, or 
tips and tricks on how to um, look at just the answer and try to find the answer from just the answer. So that's super helpful. I'm working on the 2022 books. Um, this is my 2021 book, but just looking at some of the differences, I haven't finished it yet, but that's the male genitalia. I'm adding in some prefixes and suffixes and then what each part does, which will help with our vocabulary instead of just having it there, you know, that was last year's notes. So that'll be super helpful. Adding in a bunch more data. I have the ICD-10 2022 guidelines up. I have the 2022 E&M section up. I have anesthesia for 2022 up and antigmatary up for 2022. The rest I'm working on as fast as I can. I've stopped typing it, which I've had the books, you know, since... October so it took me that long just to type two sections so <laughs> I'm doing terrible at it so I've decided to go back to this part um, and then I will type them after I finish all the sections because I got everybody wanting the new sections um, instead of boxing the entire things like this right here which uses a lot of ink um, I'm going in and doing it a little differently this year. Um, the pages are already sticking together. So I'm just kind of come on, doing a little notchy thing this time instead of circling the whole thing. Um, maybe that'll help out a little bit, plus putting more information right here. Um, and more AKAs, of course, what things mean for sure um, it can get a little busy and a little colorful for sure but there are definitions to some of the terms written there um, I still have some boxing but I never did go all the way through um, making sure to note the parentheticals anything that describes a procedure if it's never been described before in the CPT book like this might be the first time we see the word aspiration, so I define it there. Um, what is a B-U-L-L-A? Defined it there so that we know what these procedures are doing and that kind of stuff. That might be a little more helpful if we're not billing imaging, um, if we're not supposed to, putting in that information down. Um, if you are not supposed to be using modifier 50 or 51, it's Mommy, noted at the top. Alfredo pasta. Okay. And other things. Hold on one second. Let me make sure my kid did just not con my mother into that. That doesn't mean we have to order. Okay. Woo, my children are a handful sometimes. But those sections are up. I do have some new information that was on the CPC exam yesterday. I had somebody take it yesterday, guys, who took it on the very last day online. And she let me know what was on her exam. As much as she could remember, I've added it to our list on Etsy and I'll be emailing that back out to everybody that has purchased it previously in the past. I have a list that um, on Etsy that just says um, what has been on the uh, CPC exam the last um, 60 or 45 days. I forget what I have it labeled but the link's in the bio here on TikTok. Um, once the live ends you can click on that and see it but um, let's see. I'll show you what it looks like real quick. I like watching that guy. He goes to Disney every day and posts all the, all the, um, all the um, fireworks and stuff while I'm working. But that little link right there on Etsy, if you click on that black 
thing. It'll pop up with a website if I had internet service. Yeah. And you'll find it and, and get it all, go to the all list and it'll be there somewhere. We'll see right there. That's what it looks like. So if you've purchased that in the past, every time I update it with new information, I email it to the past people that have um, purchased it. Make sure you give me a good email address with Etsy. I don't care what ad mailing address you ever put down with all that because um, I don't ever get that because everything is an instant download. But just make sure your email address is good. That way I can definitely... Um, send you a new update on that every time I update it and here is some information from her exam yesterday so she took it at 1 30 in the morning before work because she had to schedule it on the last day of the year <laughs> and she needed to do them back to back both sections all at one time um, she gave herself maybe 45 minutes in between the two sections and then went to work at probably 8 a.m., right? So this is what she had the mind to record down for us. So she did it online. Part A started out with ICD-10 codes right off the bat was all of her ICD-10s. She had an OB question. We went over um, the one or more fetus quads in ultrasound. So if you've seen any of my old lives, um, I've gone over it. Plus it's on this sheet. I have the twins um, and the quads talking about and the very top part of the section group. Home, again, was part of hers. Um, that is your first page in your CPT book where we talk about the status codes. Where are you treating your patients? So 14 was they were at a group home. So knowing that where this page is, so in case they ask you what was the mobile unit, what was the regular medical office, what is tribal land, you'll know where to find that information. It's just on the very first page. And she had that hip picks code with the ambulance to the hospital. They had chest pain, shortness of breath, emergence. Um, it was probably a level one um, ER visit, which or ambulance one, which was on our last update up here, somewhere about level one ER. I know y'all remember where it was. I know I had it up here. <sighs> I think it was on the 23rd update. For the hip picks. Because it'll definitely be a hip picks one. If I need a aspiration, there's the 23rd. No, I don't see it. I know it's here somewhere. But definitely, we have the hit picks for the ambulance one. It's one of the A codes right in the very beginning for a level one. We had another question about lab panel, about adding a CBC and a white blood cell manually or an HIV to the OB panel. Be sure you know more about your OB panel in the, in the um, lab and path section. Before the exam, we had hydration, which is one I go over all the time about coding which one first in our ICD-10 guidelines, um, especially if they're dehydrated due to anemia or something. We talk about that guideline all the time where dehydration is the diagnosis code first and then malignancy is the second code. For that one but if you happen to code a hydration to go along with their chemotherapy you can do that at the same time there is a specific CPT code in the medicine section in the back of the book that will accommodate both at the same time hey Connor how's it going y'all let me know if y'all have any questions let's see what kind of coding IPOPEDIR, etc. 
What we are doing is trying to help people pass any medical coding certification exam. Um, I specialize in AAPCs. I do their CPC, COC, CIP, and CPB. I have their courses too, and I guest um, educate, guest teacher, guest speaker for some of the AAPC educators too. So you can pretty much do anything that AAPC does. But Mahima also, um, I help people with the CCA and the CCS exam, and I help people pass uh, employment um exams that employers are giving out after you've got your CPC. Um, you may have to take some employment exams, so I help out with those too. And y'all can share this live is what TikTok is telling me to tell viewers to share this live and invite more friends. I don't know if y'all have any coding friends, but I'm sure y'all have already told them. I have like entire classes in here sometimes of people that were all in the same group and all in the same class. So I know that happens. I don't know why TikTok is telling me this, but it distracts me when I see stuff floating around in front of my screen. So sorry about that. Um, sequencing radiation is on that. So um, her exam, she had um, to know that our Z51, our trusty code was the first and principal diagnosis when we're seeking radiation therapy, it could be immunotherapy or chemotherapy, but she had a specific question about radiation. Laparoscopic exams or any kind of uh, surgery was heavy on her exam. She had preventative medicine for a 40-year-old patient. And... Um, that's fine. Just be sure you know where those codes are. Those are not the regular E&M codes. Those are preventative or risk E&M codes in the back of the E&M section. So be sure you know where those are at. We had a 60-year-old that was also preventative meds. Let me see if I can find the page they're on in the new 2022 book. I don't have that one tabbed here in this one, but it's around the home visits. I really hate having those way back there in those sections. I'm working on another PDF too that will have all the new codes for 2022 in one PDF with their CPT code descriptor so that you can add it to your 2021 books. You can use your 2021 books all year long. And the only issue is making sure that you have all the updated information that you need to know in that book. So you can manually write them in, the new codes, um, or you can just not have them in there, but you can still use your 2021 book. So 49 and 48, if you're in your 2022 book, has all those preventative medicine um, codes in it. Their key word is risk. Anytime they do a risk assessment on patients for AAPC, that means you're here in these codes. One of them ends with an eights, and then this one ends in the 90s. 80s and 90s. Those are the last two digits in these codes. So they're just way in the back, out of the way. For sure. What else am I doing here? Come on. Oh, Lord have mercy. Go away. We had an ENM. It was about a hospital patient that had rheumatoid, probably arthritis or some sort of rheumatoid condition um, they rounded on them three times and she was thinking about it being a subsequent hospital code that she was asked about the other thing she said is thanks God because we did this this poor girl did her exam at one in the morning but that night before as soon as she got off work it 4.30 my time, so I think it was 6.30 her time. She tutored with me <laughs> that night before her 1 a.m. exam. 
And I had told her to write these modifiers in. These are your anesthesia modifiers. She did not have them in her book. And she thought she's a coder. She codes already, already has a job. And she felt pretty confident. She just didn't know it was on the exam and wanted a general overview. So when I quizzed her about anesthesia questions, she needed to get access to those GCs, the G9s, the AA modifiers, things that are not in the CPT book. They're in the hit picks, and her hit picks was not an AAPC hit picks. It was another version, and probably just straight from AMA or something, but it doesn't have a nice little cheat sheet in it with all the modifiers listed in one. So she had to go through and do like I've done in my 2022 book here and list out all the modifiers in one spot on the screen page 77 if you're in the 2022 book. And thank goodness she did because she had a heavy section on that. And most all of your anesthesia ones will have modifiers to go with it. And so I put those down here on this one. Um, just be sure you add those in wherever those modifiers are located. Um, the P's are listed in the anesthesia section in CPT, but all the rest are generally not in your CPT book. So be sure and move those to that particular book so that you don't have to go search for them during your exam because that will definitely slow you down. Um, the other thing that she had was something on the lines of a stent removal in the heart. I didn't have time to finish finding a, a, an example for that one, but there's plenty of examples online about stent insertions, but stent removal is not one that they have a lot of examples on, so I need to go find one for that, um, but that will be interesting to find and look up. She had a lot of radical versus partial examples. She had a circumcision on a 25-year-old. So you just need to make sure that it says greater than 5 years old on your CPT code. And usually you can use that one for your adults. Some of the med terms she had right there on your exam. Be sure you know that the pancreas is part of the digestive system, right? And then our pancreas islet is part of our endocrine system. Um, TSH combined with a T4 and a T3. They had a question about what you can add together and what you need to add separately as CPT codes. Uh, we had the hepatic panel with the comprehensive last week. And the week before that, we had a basic and a comprehensive. Now they've moved to the T TSH, the T4, and the T3. So they've changed that one up quite a bit um, in the last just three weeks. The last two was the differences between K8010 and K8021. One of them is a chronic condition and one of them isn't. But they're both without obstruction and both without um, just without the obstruction. So those are two of her diagnosis codes that she remembered from the very beginning of the section. So that's what we've got added to this whole section. How many pages do I have now? I have 29 pages of information from the last two months um, of stuff that has been on our CPC exam. Don't forget about your layered eyes. There's our ambulance service, the level one right there for ambulance service. Um, knowing that the wrist joint is distal to the elbow was super important. Um, knowing that the knee joint is proximal to the ankle joint was super important. Three layers of the eye, three bones of the shoulder, three bones of the knee, and three parts of the humerus bone. Um, oh, that new vocabulary term. Be sure y'all know what, what was that one about? Right here, prudential nerve. 
Yep, it's the major nerve that um, connects your pelvic floor to your external genitalia. And it often gets cut during a C-section too. So, And there's not a lot of repair or nothing you can do about that when that thing gets cut. So you need to be careful about that. But um, that was one of our new ones when we had the pharynx for the longest time for a good two weeks. We had that come up over and over again. Now we've got that nerve. Um, here's where our hepatic panel and the CMP was together. Yeah, let me check messages real quick. I got four. And... Oh, love the happy new year. Thank you, coupon. When are, are you have you taken your 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 test yet? Miss Coupon Cutie, when are we doing that? When's that happening? Mag the forum magnanium mag magnum is the largest bone in your skull so you want to make sure you understand what this is i uh, picture a foreman needing a hat a hard hat on a on a construction site so when i see that word i think of hat and i think of the skull so that's how i associate that one <laughs> thank you thank you very much about the notes i've really work hard on them. I want to make sure everybody has all the information they need for sure in those notes. Um, for sure. Coupon Cutie, when are you going to take your exam? What about you, Twinkle? When are you taking yours? And Connor? <laughs> everybody wait until after the 14th, I know, because they're not doing any exams for the next two weeks. They're going to be working on their AAPC, is going to be working on their site. Don't forget about a hormone that produces and helps regulate glucose is called glucagon. So don't forget about that. Super helpful information. Our Fairlink bone, the parts of Medicare. Be sure you know what pays for what. Impending heart attack. There's only three diagnosis codes in the diagnosis code book as of yet. When they turn our system over to ICD-11, which is going to be soon, um, we're going to end up having a bunch more, but um, impending heart attack is under ischemic I-20. Be sure you know your abbreviations, NCCI. June 22. Oh, Twinkle, if you stay with me, girl, you're going you're gonna to rock that test. You're going to walk out of there and... Three hours instead of four. Completely done. <laughs> Six months. Yeah, we'll, we'll get you ready for that exam for sure. Absolutely. And coupon. Yeah, I know you got to be taking your test soon. So I'm excited. I can't wait to hear some results from people that um, take it after it changes. They claim they're not changing their questions. They claim everything is going to be still... Um, um, multiple choice even their case scenarios at the end are going to be multiple choice but I know if I look at their previous work they've always had some case studies so I'm looking at their little workbook that is this study guide and you can get any year version it doesn't matter of this thing if you can find a cheap version then that's great but once you get into this book um and you start doing the practice questions at the end of the chapters, um, they've always had this one particular that I grabbed is from 2019. They've always had some case studies at the end. Um, the last two questions are case studies when everything else was multiple choice. Now these case studies never did have any multiple choice answers to go along with it. It was just something you needed to code for yourself. And then there's like number 10. So they've always had case studies, but they've not been multiple choice. Now the answers are always written in the back of the book, no matter if they're even um, case studies or not. The answers are back here in the back of the book, so you can look at their rationale for whatever chapter it is. And the case studies are listed there. 
um, for the rationale, but I just, until we see an exam and know exactly for sure what it's going to look like, um, I mean, I like to take their word for it, but they did seem a little confused <laughs> on their live that they did the other day. Somebody asked them a question about what about what about the questions at the end of the exam? And they acted like they didn't know what they were talking about. Well, you know exactly what they're talking about, the case studies. You know exactly what it was. I have their um, little video here. I'm like, why do y'all have to posturate like that? Because you know exactly what they were asking. Um, it's not that hard to tell what they were talking about. Let's see. Where is it? What did I do? I thought I called it. Did I put it under camera? I don't know what I put it under. Shouldn't be under camera, but I may have recorded it under camera instead of screenshot recorder, which is easier. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I posted them over here in our media files. And you did the form when you go in person, you're going to have the bubble sheets fill out. The reduction in the I Let's see, I think it's this one. Oriented. As a matter of fact, she same, shares the same personality style as my husband and my daughter, and that's as a precisionist. You got to love <laughs> Alex. He cuts her off from talking about her family. She does. It's says, hush. <laughs> yes, very much so. So, hey, um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go I was just going to say, uh, there, there are some basic questions, um, like... Um, and we've, we've answered some of these already, but can I use, or do I need to get 2022 practice exams and those sorts of things? No, you just stick with what you have now. 2021 curriculum will prepare you for 2022 exams. One thing I want to point out, Alex, about the practice exams that people might not be aware of, but you get access to the practice exams for a full year from the date of purchase. So if you buy in 2021 and you cross over into 2022 and you're taking the exam in 2022, all of that content is updated to reflect 2022 code changes. So by buying that product, whether you're sitting in 20... And has anybody ever taken those practice exam questions that they sell you for 400 bucks and then had them magically update and change to a new set of questions each time you take it. Now, it happens in our courses that we take because I've got their courses, but I've never seen their practice questions that you buy that are 50 each and you get a set of three or whatever. Never seen those update with the data like they say, but... The bubble sheets fill out. The reduction in items was done... Um, with the same competencies in mind and the same domains, and they were done at the same percentages as the domains. So it truly is um, a, a, just a reduction of items, but testing all of the same competencies. We did do one small change to them, and that was we do have a section at the end that is cases. Um, they are multiple choice cases in most instances. In most instances. So the only what does that one mean? That wouldn't be would be CIC. CIC. Right? Right. CIC. Right. Okay. So the CIC also was reduced, so it still has the multiple choice. And so that means CPC the will still be the multiple choice cases? Have all multiple choice questions. Mm -hmm. um, and the majority of our exams already had cases and had a case section on it. So this just took the ones that did not and, and moved some of our cases towards the end. But the content, the competencies that are covered 
preparing for it, none of that has changed. Okay, if there are multiple choice, then why call them cases? I don't understand. We still have a cut rate of 70%, yes. So, I just don't know why they would call them cases if there's still multiple choice. Why even bother changing the them and making them something special? Just because they got more words in them doesn't mean anything. If there's still multiple choice, I can still do the process of elimination. I could still hunt for key terms, that kind of thing. My friend is taking hers on January 22nd. Well, Miss Morgan, you got to get her to get in touch with me to see how she does. I should have left my CPC um, expire so I could retake it. And I would volunteer to be the first one. I'd jump right in there on the 15th and take it for y'all if I thought ahead of and thought that they were going to do this. would have just not done my, C's, <laughs> my CEUs and then just paid to retake it. Yay, me too, Twinkle. I'm going to get you there. Don't you worry. I guess to confuse us and make us nervous. I'm just like, why? Why do you even bother calling them case studies? They're just a extra multiple choice questions or whatever. They're just at the end. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Whoops. Okay, I'm bringing up some practice test questions. We're going to do like we always have. We're going to do the process of elimination. We're going to do some of these uh, CPC exam questions. Just like before, whether they're wordy or not, we're going to do the process of elimination and see if what we can find out on these. I can't remember, but I don't think we've done these before. Y'all let me know if we haven't. Thank you, lovable. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go through this. Come on, camera. You can do better than that. There you go. Let me get my drawing tool out. Rid of this. So just looking at these, process of elimination means I'm looking at the first CPT codes in each answer. And I'm only looking at them as numbers, just numerically. Which ones can we get rid of? Thank you, lovable. Love that Happy New Year thing. That's super cute. Um, for process of elimination, we could probably get rid of D. Absolutely. The 3212 is so far away from anything else, right? You know, I'm curious about the 66, but I really do love that these two are super close together. So tentatively, we'll get rid of C. Let's go look at this uh, 7, 4, and 7, 6. See what those two codes are first before you look at this question. Quit looking at the question. And when you go to these CPT codes... I want you to not read them. When I'm doing a lot of tutoring, people will go straight into those CPT code descriptors and start reading it, just word for word, like a robot. They're not, they're not looking for the key terms that make these two codes different. They'll be one word with radiology, radiology without radiology. And a lot of times it's in the second code instead of the first code, especially if the first code, the 74 is a parent code and it's very wordy, don't read that. Go straight to the second code, which might just say with radiology or without radiology or with radical or whatever, because that's the only difference you need to know. You don't need to read the whole first descriptor. Um, let me see. So four, three, two. Oh yeah, 432, 432, 74 is out of sequence, and 76 is out of sequence. If you're in the 2022 book, they're on page 349, Ooh. and so our two codes were 74 and 
76. So these two. And this one is with placement and this one is with removal. You see the differences with placement and with removal. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know nothing else. Are we removing something or are we placing something? So I'm going to go look at my test question real quick. And I'm not going to read it from beginning to end either. And I'm just going to be looking for key terms from the bottom of the question to the top to see. Did we remove something or did we place something? And up here in the name descriptor, I like to check the bottom just to make sure we really are coding a procedure instead of something else weird. But then usually if it does have a procedure, this one does say with stent placement. So it doesn't say we're removing anything. It does say placement. So the one that said placement was the 74. So I know my answer is going to be B. I really don't have to read anything else. And when you're trying to decide between which answer or what, when you're trying to decide which keyword you need to pick from the CPT codes, some of the things that I'll be changing in my notes for 20. 22 is exactly what I did right here is this one is going to be removal remove stent is what I will put here so that I don't have to evaluate this CPT code descriptor when I get to my exam I'm going to know this is a remove stent this one I'm going to know that we're putting a placement That's going to help you more than anything. Having some of this other information down, um, this is a foreign body removal. That's kind of helpful. That's the differences between these. I'll have it better marked up for this year. But just going in and going and on and doing your evaluation of what the one keyword or two will be so that when you go back to look at your test question, this is what I'm looking for. Am I placing stents or am I removing them? That's all I needed to know. This one's a biopsy. But this one right here and this one right here are different. This one's going to measure pressure. This one's with a specific test, but I need to go find the definition of this test. That's a common term so that I can look for that key term in here. So a lot of things I'm going to do differently in the uh, notes for 2022 that are going to help out for sure. Alright, let's try another one. We got a lot of four six nines. So I'd probably get rid of B, right? Because it's a four six two. Right? And just keep the four five and the four eight, maybe. Because the 30 might be out of whack. Let's go see what we've got going on with those. Could end up being Something we've gotten rid of though. You never know. Um, 469.48 are out of sequence also, so they're on page 374. Be sure and fix your out of sequence codes because that will drive you nuts trying to find these suckers. 469.48 is removing some hemorrhoids. 
and this is just an excision. 4, 8, and 4, 5 are both under removals and excisions. Let's go see what we're doing. We do have, we're doing a scope. Y'all see that? Right here where we've got the word scope. So is a scope under an excision? Nope. So what we've got going on here is I need to remove that and I need to remove my what I would have used for process of elimination and go to the other two codes. If you are not under the right header, don't force it. An excision is not a scope. Not a scope. If you see a scope and you're doing an, you're under the excision, then the process of elimination is there. It's your one to two percent of questions that are there, and they know that you know the process of elimination and would have gotten rid of 21 and 30, and that your answer is going to be one of the ones you got rid of. So, four six two. Don't stay s stuck on things. Four six two. Where are we at? Two, two, one. We're still under excision here. And then we've got the four, six, nine, thirty, which is going to be four, six, nine, thirty, four, six, nine. 30 might be under destruction. Ah, under destruction, hemorrhoids, radio frequency. We're not under radio frequency either. Oh my gosh. How are we getting rid of them? How are we getting rid of them? We're doing a rubber band. Rubber band is under the 21. Still not under an scope. How is this under a scope? We're under scopes way over here, but then we go to repairs and then incisions and then excisions. Mm. All right, the scopey thing wasn't working for me, so I switched my key terms, went into looking for exactly how they removed it found the rubber band. The differences between these and what I'll have in my notes for next year for this one will be rubber band underneath here. The 47, was that the other answers? 48 and 45. 45 is going to be ligation and 48 is the D arterialization, which means removing the blood supply, is what they're going to be doing right there. So that's pretty cool. I still don't understand how they under a scope when they're not under a scope. Maybe it's just a proctoscope, like a a pap smear opens you up with the with the thing. Y'all know that metal thing. Maybe they're using one of those and calling it a scope, but. I really wouldn't think we would be under the excision. Sure. Still got to the right answer. B is your right answer. Which is the rubber band. Let's go to this one. We've got 50, 60, 61, and another 50. What's 52? What modifier is that one? Is that the reduced services? 52 is under reduced services. Let's check our question real quick and see if we're under reduced services or not. Does it look like we were reduced to anything? Would we reduce a service under a circumcision? I hope not. I would not expect us to have ever reduced any services during that exam. So I would pick A as my exam answer and move on. Now, that's only because I've got 50 and 50 is the same answer. 
and the only difference is the modifier. Um, trying to think of another way I could explain this, but there isn't anything in here that says that they stopped or reduced, of course, obviously. We can go look up the differences, 54150, and I can show you that probably is the right answer anyway. 54, show you how it matches up. 54, which section does not have any out of sequence codes? This male genitalia. Nothing is out of sequence. Super nice that you don't have to worry about that at all during the exam. Circumcisions 54150. 54150. 54150. Five, right off the bat in the very beginning. They were on my CPC exam. We need to know the child's age. We've got a neonate male is what it says. So we need to make sure that the age is right on this one. Usually sometimes they do them under or over a certain age. If they are using a ring or a block, it says to report modifier 52 without a dorsal pin or block. So they're wanting you to know that if they're doing this circumcision and they're not using that block which they have listed in here on the question uh, right down here I know I saw it somewhere there's the ring block they did use it they did use it so the answer is 50 if they did not use it, they want to make sure that you know that that one modifier tells you to use it when they don't use that block. So that's what AAPC wants you to know from that particular question. Here's you a longer look at the question in case. But to prevent yourself a lot of worry what I did in the beginning was just look at those because they're the same. I know that AAPC is picking those for a reason. 52 modifier is for reduced services, meaning they would not have used the ring block. They would have just cut it away with scissors. This ring is like this little thing you put on it and then you twirl this thing around it and it just cuts that excess skin off after you pushed it down there into the ring. It's easier to visualize when you've done them, but a lot of people don't have the um, clinical background, and that's okay. You can still learn this stuff super easy. Just be sure and pay attention to your parenthetical notes. But just knowing AAPC's test exam questions and their patterns of what they're asking for, I would have picked these two and then just eliminated the modifier or kept the modifier if I needed to. But here's another look at the book and what it says. And I promise you will have a circumcision on your CPC exam. Even for January 14th, 15th, whenever they start back, you'll have somebody. It could be an adult, it could be a child. If they're using the ring or block, it's this one. If they're using a clamp, it's this one based off age. So younger, neonate, older adult. Hey Tiger. Hey Tracy. We're just practicing for the CPC exam. We get down to our next question.
We like to look at the answers first before we do anything else. Look for numbers that are both the same or different. I like the 220s and the 25s. We've got this 20 and that 20 in the same. It's kind of interesting. And we've got a 50 and a 59 modifier here on the end. Interesting. 5, 8, 9, 20. 5, 8, 9, 20. and 25. What I want y'all to get in the habit of is being able to look at these CPT codes and automatically tell you what the differences are between the two without doing all the reading. That's going to help you more than anything. We've got wedge here and we've got a cyst removal, cystectomy. So wedge or cyst, right? Wedge or cyst. So what I want y'all to get in the habit of is not reading all of this mess, just getting in the habit of looking for key terms. Are we doing a cyst or are we doing a wedge? And you start at the bottom, look backwards, and I do see a cyst, right? So we'll keep our 25s and we'll get rid of our 20s. And then we need to decide, are we doing all these modifiers or not? Would you do three modifiers with two, I don't know, what looks more normal is B, because you can add the 59 for two procedures, right? Um, adding the 50, is that multiple or is that bilateral? That's bilateral. What does our CPC, our, our descriptor even says that it is unilateral or bilateral, meaning you don't need to add any modifier here at all because if it's bilateral, it's included in that CPT code. Um, so that alone tells you right away you don't use C, that you're only going to use B. And that's your only answer. Don't try to code by looking up every single CPT code in any of the answers. Just eliminate as fast as you can one code from each line or keep one code from each line. Look for irregularities in what they have as possible answers. This will help you out a whole lot more than trying to figure out what part of these codes are you keeping or not. Just seeing all those modifiers just on two is, alone is enough to make you think, eh, and to stick right here. Yep. Love it, love it. Oh, I forgot. I'll show you all the answer. B. And more of the question. Oh, leave me alone. I don't want your McAfee protection. Here's another one. So we've got the 70 and the 60, but there's a difference here. The ones. We got the sevens, but these both are the nine eights, but one's a 70, one's a 12. What I like is the 60 and the 70, but they're far off because of the eight and the nine. Woo, Lord. The other thing that is nice is they both have the same IC, ICD code there on the end, too. Hmm. Interesting. What is 
59870 just because it's A. 59870. Mm -hmm. Uterine evacuation due to that pregnancy mold, right? Let's see if we can match the word mole in our CPT question. If we do have a mole pregnancy, then we would be done, right? Question. She does have a mole pregnancy. Yeah. That's it. I would just pick A. Normally, you pick the one that was you know, smaller in the CPT code selection, but because the other question was so close, we were here 589, this one was just, it was a 598, it was super close, so I went to that one first. But mole pregnancy, they did the evacuation and curette, that's exactly what that CPT T says you've got all kinds of words matching, three of them matching. You don't need to look up anything else. You know your answer is A for sure. And then writing these examples down is super helpful. So for 2022, of course, or any other year, right here you could put example 25 year. Um, she was 13 weeks. That's not weeks, but you know what I mean. Weeks. Um, with a molar pregnancy. And they spelled it M-O-L-A-R pregnancy. Even though this says mole. But that gives you the benefit of knowing you got the right answer when it's spelled just slightly different. Um, during your CPC exam. Molar pregnancy and she had a E and C which is our evacuation and curette and that's it and I like to change the color and this is the wrong pen don't use this pen it's just what I have right in front of me because my other pens are somewhere else code we did the 59870 with a zero zero one point nine then you have that example and if you've taken a course or any sort of thing or you follow along with me if you write all these examples near your codes, it'll help you during your exam to have them as reference. So I'll put that there and I do my little example. There you go. Then I have something to reference during the exam. I've got lots more in the 2022 notes coming up too. Oh Lord, they're everywhere. All right, let's go to our next one. So, we can definitely get, probably get rid of A, unless they're doing something intigmatary, right? Just plain old intigmatary if they're asking something about something along those lines. Sorry. Get my eraser out and erase that. I wish you could switch from eraser to pen a whole lot easier or faster. There probably is a way to do it. I'm just not that tech, tech savvy. But we can check the last sentence and make sure his interpretation was reported. That's not going to be anywhere near a 1000 code anyway. Anybody asking about an interpretation? So that makes me know that we need to know whether we need to add this or not. A lot of these codes already have it, 
or don't. It depends. But let's go look up the first one in sequence, 55700. They're not really consistent on whether the interpretation is there or not. You can't assume radiology has it in it, but then again, in a lot of places you can. Like just a plain x-ray of an arm or a leg is definitely going to have your interpretation to go with it. You need to know if it's broken or not. Sometimes the doctor in the ER will read it and say, oh, there's no fracture, send you home. And then you get a call a few days later saying, ah, oh, there is a fracture because we sent it out for another reading by a real radiologist who noted there was a fracture. So then they give you a referral. That's happened to me several times. But it's also really hard to tell right after the fracture. It's always better to go in a day or two afterwards um, because calcium starts building up on the fracture line as a repair. And that lights up like Christmas tree. It just is like Christmas lights on a Christmas tree. It lights up really bright when you get new calcification on a fracture line. So 55700 is a biopsy prostate. So is that what we're doing here? What are we doing? It's got a ton of parenthetical notes. If it's this, if it's that, if it's this. Blah, 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 blah. Lots of that kind of stuff to consider. The 5706 is also a bi biopsy of the, of the um, prostate. But what are you doing? You need to make sure you can find one thing that is very different. This one's just a needle. This is incisual, which is R5, and R6 is saturating or samples. So are we just doing a biopsy? Are we doing an incision? Or are we doing saturated? So that'll help us pick out the right answer. Right here we're doing something with ultrasound, calcifications, and we're just doing biopsies. I don't see anything with saturation, and I don't see that they cut into him. Like, there's no incision. They would say anything about any of that kind of stuff. Plus, it says needle biopsy. So, no incision gets rid of O5, for sure. And O6 gets rid of because there's no sampling. No saturation, no nothing or nothing. So it's just the C with the biopsy with the radiology. And interpretation on it. Makes sense, guys. I hope it makes sense. You check messages. Hey, Jen. Hey, Jing. Jing Yuan Jojo. <laughs> Yay, me too. I'm glad you caught it too. Everybody voted in the chat room for our messenger group that we not do it last night because it was New Year's Eve. A lot of people had plans and stuff, so I switched Friday nights live to Saturday night. My next one will be Monday for sure. We will have another live. And Tuesdays and Thursdays and Saturdays I do tutoring, so Monday Wednesdays and Fridays, I do the lives. Hey, lovable auntie. Monday will be 6.30 Arizona time zone. We don't go forward and we don't go backwards. So right now it is 7.43 here. I've been on for an hour. So just to give you a hint. And I do them Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays normally. Absolutely. And then... I do individual tutoring with people on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Yeah. And Sundays, I try not to do anything, but I'm always doing something. We usually do um, practice exam questions in our chat room. We have a um, free messenger chat room that we work in every day. And... If you ever wanted to join that, that is super helpful. Um, these are just some of the media files that I have in it. But if we go to the chat room, you look at these questions. People are just chatting away. We work in these all day long, every day. We're always constantly working on these. But Sundays, I make sure we do an extra bunch on that day in here, too. 
in the afternoons. But um, just come find me on Messenger if you want to join my chat group at Jen Brewer and message me there. Don't find me some other place because if you do, I can't find you here to add you to that group. This is the only account that I can add you to the group with. And then I can add you. We've got close to 200 in there right now. Pretty good little group there. And we also share what has been on other people's exams during the last few days. When they take their exam, they might come back with a vocabulary term or a CPT code or a HIPPIX code that was on their exam. And they let us know. And I've been keeping a list of that going on. And one of my followers has been keeping a list of all the practice exam questions I've been sharing with the answers. And um, she's created a document and shared that with our chat group to show all the exam questions I've ever shared of any sort um, with the answers. So really, really super helpful group for sure there. And it's all for free and all to help you get through any medical coding certification exam. Wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. How was your course? Do you think you got your um, three grand worth out of it? Hey, Lily. I'm glad you're still here. Just curious. I've only met one person who got everything that they thought they needed for their CPC exam and were ready to take it based off their course. But if you've never taken the exam before, you really, it's hard to know but what you need or don't need, but... Hey, Twinkle. Yeah, everybody in the chat's really super nice. We are in the nervous system. Got our chart. Yeah, need more practice for sure. Yep. Super helpful to get more practice for sure. And that's what we're here about. And I show you the process of elimination. I show you how to look for code answers that just don't even look right to begin with. And uh, let's see. This nervous system is super difficult. Be sure you go to page 474 if you're in the 2021 book and actually go to these nerves and writing your common terms for all of them so that you know where you're at in the bo body for this particular section. So that could be real helpful for knowing where you're at because their test questions won't say that particular nerve. They're going to say this is where they're at. They're in the chest wall, those kind of things. All right. Looking at these answers, all I'm doing is looking at them like numbers, numerically. What would um, I like to keep and what would I throw away? I like the 20 and the 21. I mean, those two are super close together, right, compared to the 17 and the 15 are farther away. These are just one number away from each other. So let's go look up 644.21, which is, we got chest wall, right, multi-chest, and then 4020 was single chest, so single or multi, and you find that information in here, but you need to figure that out really, really super fast, that's why I like to write them right here underneath the codes, so that when I go looking through my question, I can figure out, are we doing multiple or one, and you see, what Look at your question even. Which CPT nerve injection code is reported? Nerve. They only have it as singular. They're pretty good about that kind of stuff. If it was going to be multiple, they would put nerves. <laughs> they did an injection. They didn't do multiple. They did one injection. So you know right away your answer is going to be D. Right? And you can move on to your next question. And then I would write that example here in your CPT book as an example. 
true. 21 is an add-on code that you can't code by itself anyway. You couldn't even use it even if you wanted to. What about our 15 and 17? They are not add-on codes. But, yeah, absolutely. You're 100% correct on that one. You have to code the 20. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our next one. <laughs> Our next one. We've got some eyes, or we have. Is that bilateral? 50 is bilateral. So are we doing eyelids or are we doing eyes? That could also help out and keep us in the right area. I do love how the 16 is there twice and then we only need to know if we're doing eyelids or not. If we're doing an eyeballs, like it could be bilateral. If we're only doing the eyelids, then that's where those modifiers come in. Sorry, Let me draw that out. Get that back. So let's go look at our question real quick. I see just skimming, skimming, skimming. I see an eyelid, and it does say right and right eyelid, blah, 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 and then the left lower eyelid, we got two lids, so we know it's got to be an E, right? So we know our answer is going to be B without even looking at the CPT codes if you just use in the process of elimination. Now, if you want to go in there and see what the differences are, Six seven nine one six, but you won't have time to do this for the exam. But just for marking up your book and making sure that you have your book ready for the exam in case you needed to look up this code for one particular weird reason. But if you can eliminate and pick out the right answer based off these modifiers, just like we did, that is going to save your soul. Don't go to the book and don't code everything, it's going to. You're never going to get done with the exam. You're going to have two minutes and 160 seconds. No, yeah, 160 seconds to finish each exam question. So it's going to go by so fast, y'all. Just have no idea how fast that's going to go. It used to be 120 seconds. You're going to gain a little bit more time with each question, but it's not going to be life-changing thing that's going to let you spend five minutes to get to a code and figure out which one's right. Still going to need this process of elimination for sure. The other word you could have matched up is tarsal wedge, which is also in that exam question. Tarsal wedge to let you know that you're in the right spot. That's super helpful. Um, what does the 14 say in it? It says it's just a suture. That doesn't mean that they did a wedge or an excision. So you have to know that the 14 is wrong. The 23... Um, da -da 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 -da. And the 21, the 14, and the 16. What's our 16? They're all just crazy mixed up. Be sure you know that the this is the turning out of the eyelids and this is the turning in of the eyelids. The differences between the 21 and the 14, the two parent codes. The um, They don't give a very good description because they both say etropian and unless you were just given that information that one is turning out and one is turning in you wouldn't know all right our 
our next one is either the 70, 72, or 73. I did this one, I think, in on TikTok today, I think. Maybe. So, 622, maybe. I think so. I'll do it without the book being marked up. 622. 70. Seventy, seventy-two, and seventy-three. No, I did something like this. Maybe I don't know. We got the lumbar diagnostic, right? We've got the lumbar therapeutic, and then our last one is our in um, blood patch. It looks different in the twenty twenty-one book from the twenty twenty-two book. But all we need to look for is an injection, therapeutic, diagnostic, or blood patch. And then we can go right here, skim from the bottom. And we do run into the word blood patch. The only one that has a blood patch is B. The 70 does not have a blood patch. 72, no blood patch. 73 is the only one with a blood patch. Super helpful. Love it when we know which key terms to check for. Here is the next one. Thank you, thank you for the heart. We got 72s and 71s. And then one of them's a 10. They're just all over. But the 10 and the 20, or do we like the 45 and the 41? I think those are closer numerically. So I would get rid of C and A for the time being, right? And then I would keep these two. So the first one is 67141. 67141. Um, Six seven one four one and four five is right underneath each other. So look at this one first. Don't read all that mess. This one's with the photocoagulation. Are we using a laser or the um, Exxon machine? That's all we need to know. If we're not using that, then we can pick the other code. So get my mousey working. Are we using a laser? See anybody see anything? Oh, physician lasers the retinal tear. So we are using a laser. These parentheses have your AKA terms in them for a particular procedure. Super helpful to pay attention to those. So since we are using the laser, we know our answer is B. Right? B. Thank you, lovable. All right. Anybody have any questions or anything in particular y'all want me to go over? In our last uh, time remaining, we went through 10 questions really fast. We went through um, what was on the most recent CPC exams from people that sent me information. We did a couple of ICD-10 guidelines. I want to make sure y'all know that consultations, whether it's inpatient, outpatient, it honestly does not matter if your um, CPC exam question says even the words the physician referred the patient to a specialist 
for a consultation, don't finish reading the sentence there. Make sure it ends there. Make sure you don't see the last part of that sentence is saying, because of the insurance companies. How did they word that? Um, it's not a standard, but it's a requirement. There you go. Because of the insurance company's requirement that they have to have a second opinion, then that means that the patient simply or that the specialist does not get to bill for this consultation code. Don't let AAPC or any other specialty um, certification exam trick you with that particular wording. They do not get that particular code. They get a regular new patient code. Whether it's 03, 04, or 05, it depends on their speciality and what's going on with the patient, but um, your options won't be that big. It'll be either a new patient or your consult code that you get the option of for the answers, but make sure you understand it doesn't matter if the insurance company demands it. It doesn't matter if her neighbor recommended them. It doesn't matter if the doctor came in and decided to take on the case themselves. They still only get the new patient code. The only time you can use those consult codes is if it only states that this physician requested that physician. Period. Done with the sentence. There's no other documentation stating if, ands, or buts. If another doctor calls in another doctor, even in the ER, and says, hey, come look at this, then they get the consultation. You, you go on and pick that answer for consultation. If it says anything else, they don't get it. They get a regular new patient visit. <clears throat> yes, um, the um, stuff on Etsy um, will be updated. That list of, and if you've already purchased it, you don't have to purchase it again. You'll get an email like you did on the 23rd or the 24th when I updated it last time. But if you purchased that item that says what has been on the CPC exam in the last um, days, I have an update from yesterday. Somebody took their exam on Christmas Eve, and I will be sending that update out today, and you'll get the new update. So no worries there. The other things that have updated are the 2022 guidelines. Those are there. The ENM section is there. The anesthesia for 2022 is there. And then the integumentary for um, 2022 are there. So working on digestion and the male sections, urinary and stuff right now, because those are smaller sections, then pumping out cardiology is going to be a big one too so I'm trying to get out some of the smaller ones first so I can get more stuff out there quicker and then um, I'll eventually get it all typed too but I need to draw it out too for our lives so that when I'm doing lives y'all aren't looking at the 2021 book I need to draw up the 2022 book so that I have the same book as y'all do so that's all happening too Guidelines, guidelines. Where's my guideline book? Let me do that for a second. So your top, top guidelines you need to make sure you know is acute and chronic. Make sure that you understand that you can code them both in the same section. The same office visit, the same time. Some people have like... Um, thyroiditis where it's a chronic condition but they have to come in and get treated when it flares up so when it's an acute flare-up due to their chronic condition you always code the acute first and the chronic second so be sure you know that that you can code them both um, 
be sure you know where to find the list in the back of the book of these notes that say which of the Z codes can you code as a primary diagnosis code. And they have a list back here somewhere. You find it right here. So if you're in the 2021 book for ICD-10, G32 is super, super helpful, guys. There is a question running around with a total list of a bunch of Z codes is possible answers, A, B, C. And this one little chart right here, all you got to do is do the process of elimination. Look at A. If this is A, then don't pick that one. If it's if this is B, then don't pick that one. If this one's D, then don't pick that one. And then you know C, whichever one is not listed here in this small little list is the one that they're looking for. What I'm looking at is Z codes that may be only the principal and first listed diagnosis codes. So that one little chart where they divided them up is super helpful during the CPC exam. I'm sure you know where to find it. If I don't like people tabbing books because all you're doing is running to the books, you're not going to be indexing anything, you don't have time for all that stuff, but if you ever wanted to tab something at the top of your page of your book, you can tab that one. I don't even have it tabbed. I know where to find it because it's in the back of the notes, but um, that would be one page, but tab it up at the top. Don't put the tabs on the sides of your books because that just gets in your way. All you're doing is running from code to code, either numerically or whatever. You're not looking in the alphabet for anything. You're not, yeah, no, you need to keep these free of obstruction so that you can just go numerically to the correct code to save you some time. Let's see. What are we looking at? Nine nine zero nine one is out of sequence for twenty twenty two, and I'm not finding it. Okay, let's see. Nine nine. I've already fixed the out of sequences codes for E and M and anesthesia, and I can tell you what page it's on. I'm sure. Oh, it's going to be yeah yep. Yeah. Nine nine. What nine nine. Oh, it's going to be in the back of the book. The 990s. It's out of sequence, but I can't find it. Is that? Let's see. Get rid of all these books. Now, and. Might help me because I don't. Nine nine zero nine one. It's usually at the very beginning in the twenty twenty one book. It was on page fifty three, so I would assume it's going to be in the same general area. It's going to be in your E and M section. The nine nine zero nine one is on page fifty four. It's what 780 pages away from where it should be it's totally ridiculous so 99091 is on page 54 I hope that's helpful livable yeah yeah I'm working on the sequencing now um but it's just a process. It's just a process we have to go through. There is an appendix in in the back of the book that lists out all the out-of-sequence codes. Um, I find it helpful to not only in the ENM section write out the page number where it is, but the column number where it's at. And then if I got to 53 and I look at where it's at here on 53. I put the page number where it originally is supposed to be. Page 55 is where it's supposed to be. It's a pain in the butt, but 
sometimes I need both numbers because sometimes I can get here, but then y'all are asking for where is it here? Or then when you're here, you're asking for where is it here? So I write them in both places for 2022. So even the new codes are going to get there. Some of the new changes that have happened, if you're still keeping your 2021 book, um, even in like your 99211 code, let's see, your 99211, yep. So if we go to our old ENM, the 2021, the only difference in that code from one year to the other is they deleted some of the terms in that CPT code. 99211. Right here they deleted. Usually the presenting problem are minimal. They deleted those words for the 2021 section. And then for the life of me, Oh, one of their new codes. I can't figure out what the difference is, but they claim it's a new code. And I'm like, well, no, it's not. It's in the 2021 book. But they claim it's a new code. doesn't have any differences. Other than the ink mark turned from green to black. What's that? It's no big deal, right? I don't care if the ink is green or black. Mm, I can't find it off the top of my head, but I've been working on a list. It's going to be a PDF that's going to show you the differences between what the new codes are so we can change them and put them into our 2021 book so you don't have to update those. But it's not a lot of changes, not a lot. Very similar. I don't know what I haven't changed a whole lot in the sections that I've done so far. I think they redid some maybe some lab and path, but so far I haven't found a whole heck of a lot that they've changed. Besides changing the colors and the ink. <laughs> Color. like the whole code is there. I don't know why they're saying the code is new when it's been there. I don't understand. And the only difference was that the do nots change from green to black ink. It's very weird. I can't find anything about why that is or why would it be mentioned as a new code if there's nothing changed. It's still the same code. Very weird. Don't forget in the back of your um, CPT book there is a section. Don't forget in the back of your um, CPT book there is a section. 
that has code examples in it. All your code examples, Appendix C, it'll take your ENM codes and give you multiple examples of how it would be coded and worded. I like to find the ones that don't start out with the same way. These all start out with initial, 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 initial. Sometimes they'll have a rare one that will end up being something new or different way of wording something, but like this critical care service for the 91, they have right here subsequent starts out differently. The rest of them all start out with first hour, first hour, and then they switch to subsequent right here and then initial and initial. So I pay attention to the ones that change the way they're wording some of the stuff just because that is sometimes it's a little extra bonus material. But they have a lot of stuff on this ENM. All these are all in ENM code. They switch over here to office consultation from initial office, initial office, initial office. They just have a lot of variations of this coding for the ENM back here that'll show you some examples that you can take and move to the code that might be more helpful for sure. Maybe it'll tell me here why some of the wording is green and some of the wording is black. What's the significance in the differences? I know in the ICD-10 book that that's the difference between the two CPT codes, which I love. I wish they did, or the ICD-10 codes did that in the CPT book, because the ICD-10 codes, when you want to know what's the difference between 011 and 0112, the green words are the differences right and left, or unilateral, bilateral. They have it in green. I wonder what the green is significant for here in this book. I don't know if I've ever read that in the front of the book to tell me what the difference is in the, the writing. I'm glad it makes sense. You're very welcome. Dreaded medics section. Yep. It's just a hodgepodge of everything. I wish it was um, very different. They just have even ophthalmology appointments back here. Why wouldn't they move those to the eye section? EKG, CPR, you name it. It's back here. It's crazy. Lab and path and medicine are crazy. Um, the most beneficial thing is if you have two parent codes that start off with the same words, P word, P word, T word, T word, C word, C word, angio, and then arthectomy. That's your difference. Angio is here. Arthectomy is here. Going through and taking care of those two parent differences when they start out the same and doing just the one word difference, putting it here before your exam, is super helpful. You don't want to go back and have your difference being these two codes and then you have to do what you just did now. P word, P word. T word, T word. Because they're Time's ticking. And sometimes you got to pay very close attention. Autograft and allograft are only two letter differences in the middle of the word. So you got to make sure your spelling is the same on all these words. Not just that they start off with a P word. You have to actually make sure the spelling is correct and similar. Because some of it gets crazy. But finding the one word difference between those two parents and then writing it there is way more helpful. <sighs> um, we've got another P and P. Transluminal, transluminal revascularization. 
of acute or total. So this is revascularization through a cabbage. This is revasculation through an occlusion. So occlusion is your word here. Revascularization through a cabbage is here. Revasc, cabbage, revasc, occlusion. That will help you way more than anything else. Um, also taking some of these paragraphs that are part of your notes and moving them to the codes. So if we're in cardiology, I like to pick on that one because it's super easy to find, usually. So some of these sections where you have a few codes and you've coded them, and then you have some notes before you code something else. Sometimes you can find some really cool information in these notes. A lot of it's just blah that you can't deal with, but some of it is helpful, like this one paragraph that says 33206 and 33249 that's a through so every one of the codes between those two and that's like 45 of them already includes radiology so you don't add a 77 code to that so going through and writing that information on all those codes is way helpful so if you go to the first set of codes through the 49 and just say that it already includes rad, includes rad, includes rad, or even just writing at the header, whatever you can do is way helpful. Then they have a list of individual codes. So you go to the, each one and write that it already includes rad or no 77 code, whatever you want to write. Moving those to their actual real codes will help you because during the middle of your exam, you are not going to have time to refer back. I mean these codes are way up here. They're way back here and then the notes that go along with those codes are five, six pages back and then there's all these pages that go along with it. You ain't gonna have time to come read through all this and figure out where the information is that you need to go along with all these codes way back here. So moving it ahead of time is helpful. I don't know why they don't write the book with just the information with the code that you need, but I mean, they got all these parenthetical notes. They could say it includes radiology, but the descriptor does not say anything about radiology, neither does the parent. So, unless you read or remembered all that crap from way back here, then you won't know. So, moving it is helpful. And that's what I put in my notes. For you guys, in case you don't have time, putting examples of how to code certain things in certain situations. If we're just coding a cardiology patient with just an ENM visit based off MDM, here's an example. If we're billing it based off time, there's an example. So either one. I think I got it mixed up. This one's the time one and this is MDM one. So I like to write a lot of examples like that. And then once you get in here with your particular codes, how it was code, what kind of scenario was going on, what diagnosis codes did they use on it for a particular correct answer on some sort of course or an exam, that's always helpful. Which um, procedures are the most intensive because they usually include some of this other stuff because it's globally and then having them listed out so you know which ones are the most work or not is uh, helpful. Then you reverse the order. I have the stents first here and then the most complex things there can be helpful during your exam. Um, knowing they really love picking on the the bones which is the distal end and which is proximal or neck or other things. So knowing where the distal end of a femur bone is, knowing where the neck bone is is super helpful. Um, some of these pictures they didn't draw in every part even though they drew the part they didn't tell you what it is. That can be helpful to just do a reverse search 
take a picture of it and have Google search for the picture and then draw in extra parts that they didn't draw in or writing down their function. So like when you're in the neurology section, I can't tell you how helpful it would be to write down the parts of the brain and it controls what because they've already got the picture here so all you need to know is which one controls your heart rate which one controls your blood vessels or stomach which one is your sensories which one controls your vision or speech that kind of information is super helpful during the exam so draw on that in there um, really really helpful any kind of reverse searches you can do on those body parts and adding more stuff into it is real helpful knowing your AKAs for certain things or proper names for certain surgeries is helpful too um, we have that I don't know if I'll be able to find it but they've named right here code number 36560 the proper term for it and what they've made, some doctor invented and he gave it a name and he calls it a infusaport. So that catchy little phrase is just a copyrighted name for this particular CPT code. And your test question will use the word infusaport because it's the proper name for it that some doctor invented. But up in here, it don't say nothing about no infusaport. It says we've got a tunneled access device but it doesn't say nothing about no <laughs> infuse a port so having that information either given to you or finding it out um, from practice exam questions and writing it in when you find those kinds of things um, is super helpful now a lot of times especially in the ortho section they've done a pretty good job of adding in the doctor's proper names for things so the CPC exam question would say they did a Stendler type of procedure right here because that in the parentheses is your AKAs. So there's a proper name for something. So that would definitely be the, be in there in that CPC exam question, in any kind of proper names. So keeping those and knowing that is super helpful. And a lot of things in the bones are multiple areas. So we might have a repair or revision here of the upper arm or elbow for something. But if we're not in the right, if we're in the proximal end section for all these codes, instead of the distal end, which is like two pages back, you could be in the wrong area. It's just an example. I'm not sure about these codes, but... I'm just telling you a lot in the muscular skeletal has to deal with being on the proper part of the bone. So this is distal, right? It says it right there. So if it says your test question says they're all about proximal, then you're in the wrong section. So paying attention to the distal, proximal, your AKA, doctor given names, Super helpful. Those are going to be what you find in the CPC exam question. So as I'm, if I was just given these, I'm not worried about a lateral repair or an alignment. There ain't nothing there that I'm looking at other than the word distal. None of this stuff matters if I'm not at the distal area. And when, if I was looking at this one, I try to match it with that AKA name right away because I see that. This lengthening and stuff, we really need to make sure that you're on the wrong or the right end of the bone. Um, there's our allograph. Then we'll have autograph come up beside it somewhere around in here. Every time there's an allograph, there's always an autograph somewhere else. And the only difference is a U and a T in the middle of that word. So you got to make sure you're in the right spot. Don't automatically think A and you're done. Be sure you understand you're in the right word. That can be helpful. There's another right here. <laughs> Where's the autograft and allograft? Distal, 
radial shaft end. Yep. Yeah, I bet your class is very confusing. Um, you started it today. It'll have a lot of repeat videos and things over and over again. I go straight to your practice exam questions. So um, your exams you get to take twice. So what I would do is try to do the first one right away. Just your 10 question exam. <clears throat> Take it, and then when it gives you the answers, copy, highlight, and send that to print, to PDF. Then you can save it as a file save in your directory. If you can't figure out how to do that, then just take a piece of paper, get your folder, and write out every question and answer. So what I do is I write um, the question in one color, then I write the answer behind it in a different color because they'll give you the correct answer for that question. Now when you retake that exam again, your 10 question practice exam, they're going to give you the same questions, but 30% of them will be recycled and you'll get new questions for those. But the ones that you took the first time, you'll have a written document of what the question and what the answer is. You'll at least get a 70% because you'll have the correct answer down. And then you can try your best on the new ones and then write those answers down when you get done. When you get done with all that, transfer that into here and say I had an arthritis patient who had this sort of surgery, this plasty. The correct answer was this code with that diagnosis code. You can even go to your ICD-10 book and write the same example again. It's just four short words with that diagnosis code write it beside that diagnosis code with that CPT code beside it, you'll have an entire course as a reference in both your ICD-10 and your CPT book for when you get ready to take your exam. But what I did was, ooh, what I do with the mouse? I can't do nothing without a mouse. Here we go. In my storage over here somewhere, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Here we go. I can let's see. No, nope, wrong one. Let's see. I don't know if I can find it because I don't have access to all of the. I hate it when I'm on this tablet version of this thing. If I'm on the turn it into a computer, then I have then I can see all my options here at the bottom, which right here is one of those particular practice exams. So when you see it and they give you the answers for your practice exam, even if it's the 10 question ones, you see it, all you gotta do is take your mouse, put it at the beginning of something and highlight it and then right click and hit print and then tell it not to print to paper but to print to your printer, to your PDF print as PDF, it'll print it as PDF, it'll ask you where do you want it to save it, just save it on your desktop or something, somewhere where you can find it, and then hit save. Then you've got it to where you don't have to write it all out, but you can still write it all out, it'll be okay. At least it's you'll learn it. But then you can go back in and write all the references like that too. Super helpful to do that. The course you can get through pretty quickly if you um, just go to, um, let me get into my blackboard real quick, blackboard, and let me go there, let me get into my blackboard real quick, blackboard, and let me go there. Blackboard. Loggy on. And you can go to your course. 
Yep, 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 yep. You can go to any course whatsoever. So, for your example, if you go to any course, you've got your chapters right here. So, I just pick a chapter, go on and download. Ooh, my computer screen. Come on, you can focus on it. You can take your chapter one assignment and right here, all you got to do is go over here to this corner and go on and tell it your computer to download that. This will be your whole workbook for that particular chapter and just save it somewhere on your computer. Create a file and do that for every chapter. And then all you got to do is just take their examples and move those to the chap to the CPT book in the ICD-10. Ignore the rest. Maybe keep your abbreviations and your definitions are are helpful. Um, but the examples, write those, and then at the very end, you'll have some um, glossary of terms that you can write in at the beginning of your CPT book for that particular chapter. Um, those are helpful. Any prefixes, suffixes that they have, the rest of it just you ain't got time for all of that. Then when that particular chapter, you can go straight. I, I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't worry about that. Sure, I'd go straight to the review. Go on and take that review. Like I said, write down at least all your questions and answers if you didn't pass it. Even if you did pass it, go on and highlight. Save that exam as a PDF print it to PDF and save it so that you can transfer that information to your CPT books and move on to your next chapter. Make it easier on yourself. Download this. Oh, sorry, my camera does not like to go from one thing to another. Um, download that. Take your quiz. Ignore the lectures. Do the application. They're all on... Um, Google, you can find all the answers to all these. Just highlight the first sentence in every one of your clinical practices, put it in a search engine, and paste it in there. You'll be able to find it right away. And writing your answers, keep those as, as examples. Go on and do your review. The first time you do it, save it to print, and then use it as a Control F. Control F, so you can find. Keywords when you take the test again the next time. If you didn't pass and make a 70, you can save the exam as a PDF like I did here. Choo, 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 choo. So if you did this, cancel that, and you did an exam and you're retaking it, then all you got to do is control F. You'll have the F words and you can say fracture. Is your question coming up? You can go to your next question with the fracture, and you've got the answer right there, and you can pick it next time. But then you can also um, move those examples to your CPT book. Super helpful to do it all that kind of way. Makes it a funner project than all those lectures and all that other mess. But that's my advice, to get through it sanely, if that makes any sense. <laughs> Oh, Miss Rodriguez, I know. It took me nine months to finish that course. I bet it did. Isn't that awful? I mean, you, you get all gun ho about doing it and doing it proper, and it, it's enough to drown you. <laughs> all them lectures, I'd have skipped every bit of it. Or play it when I'm vacuuming <laughs> in the background. Play it loud in the background while you're dusting or cleaning, doing laundry or something. If you really want to listen to it, the lectures. But other than that, I wouldn't listen to them. No way are they helpful. They're not helpful for passing the CPC exam. And um, there ain't enough that you could learn in that to help you code for any employer either. So you're going to learn on the job. No matter what, every job will be different. Even if you're a seasoned coder, you, everything's going to be done differently at a different doctor's office or clinic or hospital because they have contracts. They base billing off of their contracts, not off of the 
coding stuff, so don't worry about that. Um, you will learn on the job. All you need to do and your main objective is to get certified in coding. Whether you do it through AHIMA or AAPC or some other course, whatever, you need to get certified. And your purpose for these courses are just to pass that exam. Well, that course will not help you pass that exam. So the exam practice questions written as examples in these CPT books will do more help. The exam practice questions written as examples in these CPT books will do more help than anything. That way you have them for reference when you see those exam questions again. Learning what modifiers can go with what CPT codes. Learning where your parenthetical notes are in this book and when to use them. Um, it's super helpful and then keeping up with the vocabulary terms that we are finding on the CPC exam is super helpful since they will not allow you to carry a medical terminology book with you anymore a medical dictionary which is absurd you've got to know every single medical terminology term there is just like a physician and you can't, no matter, I've been in medicine 20 years, and some of the terms that they come up with and find, and some of them are temporary glands, you only get during a certain time in your life, and then they're never there ever again. You're not born with them. It's crazy, some of the terms that they do find. So I let you know what medical terms are on the CPC exam within the last 60 days or so. People share them with me, which is great that I've been mentoring with them. And we hope that they are still on the exam when you take it too. So that's the most helpful stuff is practicing with a um, messenger group. Um, any kind of coding study group is super help messenger group um, any kind of coding study group is super helpful especially if they're geared toward what you are trying to pass that is helpful I have a free messenger chat group which is super helpful for the CPC exam um, just come find me on messenger at Jen Brewer and we do that there. If you want individual test um, mentoring, tutoring, it's best to schedule a tutoring with me one-on-one -on -one when you're a month away from your CPC exam. Um, although I had somebody do it within six hours of them taking the exam and we went through the exam as much as I could within th that time frame, but that was super cool. Um, to schedule a tutoring with me and we can go through some practice exam questions and I can show you how to pick out the right answers super fast like I do in these lives. I also, if TikTok records these lives, I post them on YouTube. So I have tons and tons of hours of my old lives, me going through those um, practice exam questions there. Um, and then copies of my notes from the CPT books are available on Etsy if you happen to have no time to do this by yourself and you just need to copy down something super quick, they're there. But our little messenger group is just going on and on while I'm doing my live, but we work in it every day and we work practice exam questions. Um, but this is for the people that are getting ready to take their CPC exam for sure. And um, if you're just looking to get started and look into getting a course or not getting a course or don't know how to get certified, the best place to start out, I always think, think is the AAPC website. And they have a messenger group here, the AAPC. Um, they have one. It'll answer all your questions about what's the exam, what's going on with it, um, how do I take it? How much does it cost? Um, can I take it in person? Can I take it not in person? Sorry, my thing does not look... But they have an album up here that has tons of um, 
photos of people who passed. Medico, that's super cute. But they also have, oh, where is their files? That files one is super cool too because they have a lot of PDFs and things that can help you too. But you can also do key word searches up here for how much stuff cost. Um, things like that, you can do searches. But when you get ready for your CPC exam and you want to practice exam questions and prep your books and get ready, um, my little tutoring group is super helpful. All you got to do is come find me on Messenger, which is right there, Jen Brewer. Come find me there. Same profile pic is here on TikTok and ask me and I'll add you. It's the only account I have that can I can add you into that group. And then when you get into the group, we have media files here that you can also search those media files all the pictures that I've shared um, all kinds of videos photos of how to prep your book how to do the ICD-10 how to move your guidelines from one thing to another um, moving your guidelines to the actual diagnosis codes uh, when people share what was on their exam, they share it there. We have files, PDFs that you can download, um, all kinds of stuff, just all kinds. Plus, just the chat role of questions and answers is super helpful, too, for sure. <laughs> I got a, I got a Karen who wants in the group. Oh, no, I'm just teasing. Isn't that terrible? We've got that... Um, name going on I love all my Karens I love them all I don't know why everybody's scared of Karen now my mother-in-law is named Karen <laughs> we love Karen what else do I have YouTube oh my gosh I'm really hoping that this live um, saves because my last one did not oh, and Let's see. My videos are right here. It's under Coding by Jen, but all my repeat lives are right here. Um, they are two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours. There are several hours long of me just rattling on about the exam, how to um, do the process of elimination, practice exam questions from AAPC are on here, um, and how to na navigate that system and pick the right answer super fast. Hours and hours. I have people that listen to me on the way to work. Oh, my gosh. My voice. That's super helpful. That's all free. And then, of course, we've got the 